Do you have an e-commerce site? We're talking about how to convert more sales on your website here on The Journey. All right, so it's time to up your game and convert more sales on your website. We've got tons of tips for you today. We're gonna to check out a couple of websites that we really love, and we're gonna point out some of the qualities of why they're so successful. Yeah, step number one, make it simple. You don't want your page to have all of this information that's really distracting. Make it clear cut with all of the valuable information that your customers need. Yeah, so if we're talking about out simple, I really, really like Nike's website, especially their product page. I like to go running every now and then, so I'm constantly looking at new running shoes, but they make their page super simple to just check out shoes. There's no extra clutter or randomness. It's all right here and easy for me to kind of digest. And they have a nice little side menu too of being able to really categorize different things and kind of jump into different colors or price range and things like that. But it's all super simple. I don't have to go and hunt and find out where to go. Another thing that I really like about their website is they show those other color options available right underneath those pictures. So I don't have to individually click into every single product to see maybe different colors. And with keeping it simple, you wanna make sure your call to action is simple as well. Don't make a giant button with a bunch of descriptions about what they should do. Make it a simple add to cart or purchase now or buy now. You essentially wanna tell them exactly what to do in as little words as possible. Our next tip is highlight your best selling products. So make it really easy on your customers, especially if they're just starting to get to know your business. Maybe they don't know what to try out first. Make it clear. I know one of my favorite businesses is Hey Girl Jewelry in Austin. It's just a local jewelry shop. They have a really great website where right there on the homepage, you can just click into best sellers. You see which products really are their claim to fame, what people love so that you know what to buy. Yeah, I think we as consumers want to be doing what all the cool people are doing. If we see that others are buying these products, hey, I want to buy these products. I want to fit in. I want to be a part of the crowd. And if you really show off what others are buying, basically, it makes that basically that buying decision a little bit easier for those people. Our next tip is to plan for those mobile impulse buying decisions, right? We're always on our phone, whether we're hanging out in the studio or in line for the bathroom or wherever we are, we're on our phones, we're constantly looking online, different websites. And if your site's not mobily optimized, the chances of someone paying for something on one of those sites you have to like scroll in are nope. basically none. Yeah, 80% of smartphone users are more likely to actually purchase something if that mobile design or app is a lot easier to use. I know one thing that drives me crazy, because I'm definitely an impulse shopper, Other guilty of all of this, is whenever you're scrolling through and you get to the bottom of a page, you find a product that you like, you click on that, and then you go to the page, and then you hit the back button, and all of a sudden it scrolls all the way back up to the top, and you lost your spot. That is so frustrating, and I will just hit the back button, and I don't want to be on that website anymore. Our next tip, if it makes sense for your brand, is to use humor to engage shoppers. Now, if it's on brand, try to be witty and funny to really connect with your audience and make them laugh. Like if it were me on a website and I saw an awesome dad joke, I'm probably more likely to inclined to purchase from them because a good dad joke just gets me every time. Yeah, and if humor isn't on brand for your business, you can just be more conversational. Make it really targeted to that demographic that you're trying to reach. All right, so getting a product to the cart is half the battle. You have to make your checkout process a breeze. And I really like this website, moff.us. They got me. Uh, I literally have it on my computer. But uh, it they make the checkout process super simple. And what I like about it is they don't make me create an account if I don't want to. So if I go on the website and I go ahead and choose to add to cart, the cart pops up right here. I had another one in my cart already. I've been shopping Busted. around. Busted. And I go to checkout here. And then when I go to the cart here, I have the option to enter in my information, obviously my email address, so I get that receipt, and then where I want it to be shipped. But if I want to, I can save this information for next time and create an account. But if I don't, I can continue as a guest. The key there is that it's optional. The research shows that 31% of cart abandonment, which is a real thing, happens because basically these websites are forcing people to create an account first. Yeah, and I get it. Like you want people to sign up and be a part of your website, but 
make it easy for them first. And if they love your product, they're going to come back and create that account next time. Another tip is offer different payment options. I know whenever I'm impulse shopping on my phone, and then all of a sudden I have to go get my credit card out of my wallet. It's against, you know, it's on the other side of the room. I'm not gonna do it. I'm just not. Just but move on. I do have PayPal or Apple Pay. So whenever companies allow that as an option, all of a sudden I don't even have to move. And then I'm completing the purchase rather than abandoning that cart. Yeah, and our next tip here, it should be a no brainer, but it's to secure your website. And this starts with an SSL certificate. So that's gonna encrypt the connection from us just chilling at home on our laptop or on our phone to the server where your website is stored. Now, if I go on that website and it does not have an SSL, I'm sending my credit card information over the internet in plain text for anyone to read. There's also gonna be a giant not secure warning at the top of the browser, which is a giant no-no, and those visitors will never check out from your website. So having that SSL in place is crucial to make sure that you can sell online. Another idea is consider targeted promotions. If Valentine's Day is coming up or if Mother's Day is coming up, make it really easy for shoppers. You already have it laid out. You can have a gift guide. That's a great way to help attract people and really sell certain products, especially around that time of year. Yeah, and it's an easy way to really capitalize on those holidays. Like Moft and even the Hey Girl would have holiday specials. Like here's that holiday special deal on Moft here. And it's just an easy way to have some fun. And if it makes sense for your business, do it. But if it doesn't make sense for your business, you don't have to jump on all of the holiday trends. And then another way to really like offer just something that just a no brainer is to offer free shipping with your products. No, everybody loves free shipping. Oh, yeah. now, if you tell me a product is $19.99 plus $5 for shipping, not gonna be inclined to purchase. But if you say the product's $24.99 with free shipping, I'm like, you know what, that's... It's a great deal. It's not bad, I might just do it. The next thing you should do is test your site out. I mean, pretend that you're a consumer looking through your phone or even on a desktop. Make sure everything works really well. It's super easy, laid out simply, and basically that it works for them. Yeah, and a couple things you can do is, because I know we're, we're constantly looking at our website all day, every day. We don't really have that outside perspective. We know our website. So ask a friend or a relative to Go through your website and see what Roblox they see. Uh, or there's another cool website that I've used in the past called Mouseflow. So there's a, it's a freemium model, so you can try 100 sessions for free, but it'll show hotspots on your site and it'll actually record people on your site. It'll show where their mouse is going. So you can kind of see their flow. So if they're going to a page or a section of your site that you don't want them to go to just yet because you want them to convert up this button, it'll be able to notice that and adjust your content or your images accordingly until it makes sense and you update their flow. Another thing you should consider is offering free returns. I know especially when you're first trying out a business or a certain product, you wanna help build that confidence. And so this is a really great way to do that. Plus a lot of consumers, that has a huge impact on them. So I know with Hey Girl earrings again, you know, they have a really great example of how they lay out their promise and their return policy right there on the product page. So you can see here it says, you know, we stand behind all of our products and honestly believe that they're fantastic. However, if for any reason you are unsatisfied, you know, we back every purchase by our standard 30 day money back guarantee. So it's laid out right there very clearly. It's not some tiny script, you know, at the bottom of the page that you never find. And they also suggest different resources like client services that you can text or email to really help make that transition even easier. Yeah, 96% of consumers would basically shop at a retail place again solely based on their return policy. So if I've, I've bought something somewhere and it just didn't fit me or didn't work out right and that return policy was super easy, they were great to work with. I'm probably going to want to do business with them again because of that experience was so easy. I love when a business includes the bag that can easily be closed and shipped back so that you don't have to do like a new bag and they just make it super easy. I know I'm not going to name any specific businesses, but there's one in particular <laughs> where I literally had to pay $10 just to return my item, which was pointless. Like I'm trying to get my money back, but I'm paying you and it doesn't make sense. And I never shop there again. Our last thing for you to consider is investing in email marketing, especially if you're an e-commerce shop. 
We all think that email is dead. It's all about social media, but email marketing is still relevant. Like check your inbox right now and see how many people are emailing you about their products. And they're, they're brands that you love and you're actually opening. And even if you're not opening those emails every single time, you're still seeing their subject line. You're still seeing their brand and their business and you're staying top of mind. That's exactly what you want to do with your audience. At the end of the day, make online shopping super easy for your customers. They want to give you their money. Don't make it difficult for them to do that. That's a wrap. Be sure to like this video and comment down below. Let us know your favorite place to online shop. And if you found this video helpful, subscribe to our channel and ring that bell to see these episodes first. This is The Journey. We'll see you next time.